Welcome back to the Developer Landscape series. In this series, I cover topics related to developer tools. These tools help developers get the job done with higher quality and convenience. If you're picking up this series in the middle, you can clone the examples from this series from GitHub. To do this, open the bit.ly link on your screen in your browser, and this will take you to the GitHub repo. You can clone the code by clicking on the clone or download button. The GitHub URL that you see may start with HTTPS and that's fine. Just copy the contents to your clipboard. In your terminal, change to a working directory. I like to put all of my source code in a directory called SRC. Type git clone and paste the GitHub URL and finally hit enter. And now to the show. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a few design and prototyping tools. Design and prototyping tools are useful in thinking through how to solve a problem before you start writing code. In most cases, you don't really just want to sit down and start writing code, even though I'm guilty of it, just like anybody. And you probably will want to get some feedback on what you're thinking before you start hacking. We're going to look at design tools that cover a few bases. First, we'll look at a UML design tool called Plant UML. After that, we'll take a look at some UI-oriented prototyping tools, Balsamic Mockups and Envision App. Okay, let's take a look at Plant UML. I mostly use Plant UML for sequence diagrams, but it can be useful for many more things. The coolest thing about Plant UML is that you define everything in a plain text file. That means you can add it to source control. It can be integrated in lots of IDEs and even wikis. This is because Plant UML generates graphics from the text files as artifacts. Plant UML is delivered as a single jar file. You can experiment with Plant UML on their website as well. I've already downloaded the jar. Once it's downloaded, we can run it just like any application. You can also run it from the command line. When it's run like an application, a window opens and you can change to a directory to monitor. If you drop any of the supported file types in that directory, it will automatically render the plain text into a UML diagram. We're just going to use text files. Let's open that plant UML directory from our examples. You can see that bot.txt was automatically detected and plant UML created a PNG file. Double clicking on the entry will open the generated image. Now let's update the file with some additional details. In the project readme, replace the contents to bot.txt between the start and end UML annotations. This example sequence diagram describes the interaction between Flask, a Spark REST endpoint, and a Spark webhook. You'll see that the image is automatically updated. Okay, next is balsamic mockups. Balsamic is a useful tool for rapidly creating mocked up user interfaces. It's intentionally low fidelity so that the person looking at the mockups knows it's not the real thing. I know I've shown high res mockups to managers and they thought the product was already built. You want to avoid that kind of situation. Balsamic is built by indie developers, which is pretty cool. It's also a commercial tool, and so if you like it, you'll have to buy it. But they offer a trial, so you can try before you buy. Balsamic is built around a canvas. You drop these UI widgets onto the canvas uh, to build your UI. You can do this for desktop, mobile, and web mockups. I'll create a new project which loads up the canvas, and then I just start dropping UI elements onto the canvas. To see how it works, let's mock up a blog. Grab the browser UI element. To create a header, let's grab um, search for a title. Okay, rename it to awesome blog. Now let's create a mocked up blog entry post. We need a title, body, and maybe some timestamp information. Drop a title on there. Drop the body. Drop a string of text and type in a dummy date. Let's put a separator in. 
Finally, we just copy the post entry. We can put a sidebar in, add a vertical rule, and tree pane. We can update the text in the tree pane to give us a view that shows the history. So there you have it. There are tons of widgets and features in Balsamic. You can even link to other mockups so you can simulate navigating through an app. I'm thinking you can tell it's pretty fast to build a UI to get feedback on. Finally, we're going to look at an online service called InVision. Our designers use this in DevNet, and it's designed to do both low res and high res wireframes. Uh, I think the big advantage of InVision is that since it's online, it's designed for you to be able to provide feedback uh, within your team. The downside is that you have to bring your own graphics. InVision does require you to create an account to use their service. Uh, we're going to take a look at one of their example wireframes, and I've already logged in. So let's load up the wireframe called Login. You can see that it's higher fidelity than what we saw in Balsamic. As I mentioned earlier, you create the graphics in another program, maybe like Sketch or Photoshop, and then import them. You could import an image of a balsamic project uh, to take advantage of those collaborative features I mentioned. Anyway, uh, if you click anywhere on this page, it will show you which elements are clickable. Navigating around, uh, you can see that this is a useful tool for simulating what the app experience would be like. If you turn on comment mode, then you can leave comments for specific elements for the team that created the wireframe. I'm going to quickly create a new project. Let's call it blog. Now I'm adding a screenshot from the balsamic project we already built. I had created that screenshot already. Now I'm going to add a hotspot so you can see how that's done. Okay, that's it for design tools. I hope you enjoyed learning about plant UML, balsamic mockups, and Envision. I found each of these tools to be really useful in the development process. There are tons more of these types of tools out there um, to help you get feedback before you write any code. All right, we've come to the end of another episode of the Developer Landscape series. If you want to try out some of your new skills, head over to Cisco DevNet at developer.cisco.com. You can also stay in touch with me or ask questions via Twitter at A Roach. Also, follow DevNet on Twitter at Cisco DevNet to keep up with our latest adventures. Thanks for watching.